Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Since I reviewed the Rocky Horror Picture Show last week, which was a Friday, because I did watch the movie on Blu-ray that I own now, um, I did actually upload the Facebook video uh, that I did uh, back in 2007 when I was invited to Mia's uh, 30th birthday bash that was going for the Rocky Horror Picture Show theme. <laughs> really awesome. And I, looking back at the video, too, that I posted, because, you know, we were all invited, joining in with Quinn, and we were actually started to film around. We, we even started watching the movie, and and all the guests were all dressed up in the, the traditional costumes from the musical and the movie, of course. And what I probably didn't realize, though, was that I think part of the actors that they invited were actually from the Shadow cast. Uh, that I saw on the Blu-ray, which was at the time celebrating its 35th anniversary, and now it's 45th. Um, if that was the case, then I might be right, but if I'm wrong, then, <laughs> well, hey, nobody's perfect. But, yeah, it was really cool, because I got to see, uh, looking back at the video that I shot, I mean, you got to see, you know, Joe Mantegna alone with his family, you know, together, just talking about how they first saw the movie when they were going to, um, on vacation. I think they just went to go see a movie, which turned out to be a the movie uh, that Roger Ebert wrote, of course, Ballad Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. I mean, they didn't like the film, but what they didn't realize was that it was a double feature, so that's how they got introduced to Rocky Horror, and ever since then, they became fans, and that's part of what led to me uh, going f to become a, a makeup artist. Yeah, because they did all the makeup and the costumes and everything. Yeah, I mean, the whole guests around were all dressed up exactly. And, and I did show you the photograph of, of me with Mia, and I was like wearing those <laughs> big glasses, and I was wearing the mask too, the, almost like a masquerade type. That was really fun. And I know they just recently moved to a new place somewhere, because I've been to uh, their previous uh, place several times. I mean, I would love to meet them again, but since we're stuck in this pandemic, well, I don't know when will this be over soon. I mean, when will things be normal? Uh, but nowadays, you know, Joe is now looking quite different. I mean, yeah, he now has white hair and a goatee, but he's looking great, and so is the entire family. I mean, I really miss them, and let's hope for the best that we'll have to offer to survive. Okay. <laughs> anyway, now I want to review, which is not a sequel or a prequel, but an equal to Rocky Horror. It's simply called Shock Treatment, which, instead of being a ubiquitous mix of traditional horror with sci-fi and kiki sexuality. This time they're going for the inclusion of television uh, blending in with uh, mental health. And that's exactly what the story was going for. Um, so unfortunately this movie is criminally overlooked. Um, which I know like Rocky Horror, they did brought back many of, of the cast members and the folks behind the entire story here. Uh, the only difference here was that, yes, they got some different actors. Um, at this rate, Cliff D. Young and Jessica Harper were now playing both the couple, Brad and Janet, which I know they originally were played by uh, Barry Boswick and Susan Sarandon in the original. Of course, from what I was told, because I had to do some research, it was that Jim Sharman actually originally did chose Clifton Young to play the part of Brad, but because he had a TV show, and I think it was short-lived, called Sunshine, that uh, he wasn't available, so they had to cast Barry Boswick. But Clifton Young definitely did a great job, and so was uh, Jessica Harper. I mean, the main reason why she also got cast was because Susan Sarandon um, demanded more money to appear, than, and also true was that she had to do another film. So that's why she couldn't participate. 
And neither was uh, Tim Curry either. I mean, he didn't t participate either playing a different role. But I guess in some cases, like, I would imagine him actually playing a, a whole different character compared to his Dr. Frankenfurter. And that was, of course, the character named Farley Flavors. Like, this could have been interesting. But, yeah, I, I would have loved to see Tim Curry playing that role. But that never did happen. And now that uh, he already has a stroke, I mean, it never will happen. Whatever. So they got uh, Cliff the Young playing a dual role. So he got to play this character who happens to be, yep, a spoiler. <laughs> He's a twin brother of Brad. <laughs> okay. Um, but it was nice that they got the, the cast joining in. I mean, including Richard O'Brien and Patricia Quinn. I mean, it's nice to see him actually play a whole <laughs> particular role as the Doctor. But yeah, by the time it's released anyway, I mean, they did release it on October 30th. That's before Halloween. Um, only given a limited release uh, for the Midnight Movie Circuit, just like Rocky Horror Picture Show did. But it was a, cr a critical and commercial failure upon its release and, and didn't get a, a general national release for 20th Century Fox. And they felt like, you know, maybe this wasn't going to work out as they hoped for. Um, but interesting enough, I mean, like Rocky Horror, this also became a cult following, but more like a minor one. Um, and yeah, it flopped pretty badly compared to Rocky Horror. But at that point on, in 2015, it did actually, I, I couldn't believe this, it actually adapted as a stage production for London, which I think to me it would have worked. And I guess what people didn't realize though was that it just, that this was ironically <laughs> the beginning of, you know, reality TV as we know it. So yeah, this, this is the movie that pretty much started the the ironic started the uh, reality TV that's happening in today's world and would MTV come to mind because they're the ones as well as uh, network television which I know that's becoming you know as successful as they can come you know during the 2000s but I know reality TV was starting in its um, early days even in the 80s and 90s which I don't think people didn't realize even though they were mostly variety TV you know, like America's Funniest Home Videos, and I know there were shows like That's Incredible and Real People and all. And I, I know there was, of course, we have Cops, we have Real Stories of the Hybrid Patrol and all that, so. But of course, MTV had the real world and world rules and many others that follow. But nowadays, by the time the 2000s came along, that's where we started getting so many reality shows on every single network. You know, like, you know, Survivor, uh, Joe Millionaire, <laughs> uh, American Idol. So you can think you can, so you think you can dance. Um, the Bachelor, The Bachelorettes. I mean, every single show that we got. And it just never stops. Pretty sad, isn't it? When you think about it. Yeah, and that's why I'm not the biggest reality TV fan here. <laughs> now I can see why, you know, <laughs> TV is becoming more sanity than ever. Well, anyway. So let's begin with this movie. It stars Jessica Harper, as we may already know from films like Suspiria, that's from director Dario Argento as well as Phantom of the Paradise from director Brian De Palma, as well as some movies like My Favorite Year and uh, Pennies from Heaven. And yeah, I heard she's in the remake too, well, of course, of Suspiria. Uh, Cliff D. Young, in a dual role, uh, who of course has been known for films like Secret Admirer, as well as uh, Pulse. Yeah, the movie with Joey Lawrence and his brother Matthew, uh, which was a horror film involving the 
electricity that's taking over in Los Angeles. I did review that film, by the way, which is not to be confused with the Japanese horror film going for the internet isolation here. <laughs> okay, which I know they had a remake too. Uh, Richard O'Brien, you know, from Rocky Horror, uh, joining in with uh, Patricia Quinn, Little Nell, Charles Gray, you know, of course, from the two James Bond pictures. Uh, Barry Humphreys, Ruby Rax, Jeremy Newsom, Wendy Redback, Rick Mayall, yes, the British comedian who went on to become success with the young ones that did air it on both BBC and then later MTV. And that's how he went on to do the star of the movie Drop Dead Fred, you know, the title world. And sadly, he passed away um, back in 2014. Yeah, I still miss him today. But he was such a funny bloke. <laughs> Darlene Johnson, Manny Wedwood, Barry Denon, Betsy Brantley, Chris Malcolm, Eugene Lipinski, Gary Shaw, uh, Claire Tolman, Dan jo David John, Gary Martin, Sonetta Burnett, and Sal Perel. Yeah. <laughs> Who happens to be part of the fan club of Rocky Horror. Yep, it's written by Richard O'Brien, along with additional ideas by Brian Thompson, and of course, it's co-written and directed by Jim Sharman. The movie begins set in a home for the happiness town called Denton, USA, where it's now being run by a fast food magnate named Farley Flavors, who's played by Clifton Young, who happens to be the twin brother of Brad. Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> Who all also happens to be played by Cliff DeYoung, Young. Yeah, both in their dual roles. Uh, joining in with uh, Janet Weiss, who's now known as Janet Majors, uh, who's played by Jessica Harper. They're now a married couple, you know, living in Denton, which already the entire town is being entirely encased within the television studio of a local TV network called Denton Television, or DTV for short, sort of like MTV in a way. Uh, all the residents are either stars or regulars on the show, or as well as the cast and crew or audience members to join by. And Brad and Janet are being chosen by being seated in the audience and participating in a game show called simply Marriage Maze that's being hosted by a very kooky, supposedly blind host named uh, Bert Schnick, who's played by Barry uh, Humphreys. Which I know that led to the song, uh, Bitchy in the Kitchen, or I'll be crying in the bedroom all night. <laughs> so as a prize that they actually won, Brad is being imprisoned on a soap opera called Deadonville, where it centers, of course, a local mental hospital that's being run by their siblings, uh, Cosmo and Nation McKinley, you know, brothers and sisters, played by Richard O'Brien and Patricia Quinn. Also join in is uh, a very uh, sensationalist uh, nurse, Asalon, who's played by Little Nell. So I guess you could say <laughs> they're probably a different part of uh, Riff Raff, Magenta, and Columbia. <laughs> so at that point on, though, um, Brad is being injected um, by the medicine. Also joining in is Rest Home Ricky, who's played by Rick Mayall, uh, as well as all the rest of the, the crew. <laughs> so they, they did took Brad into the entire uh, mental wards, or known as terminal, which the entire uh, place is all, you know, plated in with uh, white uh, cushion-like uh, doors and rooms and rolls around and they're taken directly into the cage that Brad who's already inside a wheelchair all wrapped around with a straight jacket and <laughs> cover his mouth with this gag and also injected with all the sedatives that was given. Uh, we also learned that um, they did focus on uh, Janet's uh, parents uh, Emily and Harry both played by Darlene Johnson and Manny Redwood, they're just going around just, uh, which Harry just goes around, you know, playing golf, and then apparently that led to a musical number where 
thank God I'm a man. Um, kind of despise Mexicans and all. Well, Emily is just basically just, yes, a happy housewife, just, uh, you know, just fixing, ironing clothes, you know, helping out, and you know, just, just becoming a homemaker and all uh, to care for. So, yes, um, meanwhile, uh, Janet is given a taste of showbiz as Farley uh, molds her into, into a singing diva superstar, so yet joining in with the help of Cosmo Nation. Uh, that's where we get to that song, dance number two, called, uh, <laughs> which is uh, a little black dress. Uh, slip, 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 dip, 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 drip, 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 strip, strip, strip. Doing the hip, 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 and a little back dress. <laughs> okay, um, well, there's other, other uh, Sin Dunce numbers, too, where, at this rate, um, uh, Janet had to stay in at um, the Dead and Vale, where, you know, just, just to relax and find out what Brad is doing, hoping he'll, he'll continue, maybe to, to recover from from the madness he was getting. It's the memorable song, Shock Treatment. And there's even other scenes too where, you know, they, when the colors actually change from, from white to red. Yeah. Almost like the color of blood. Or probably the color of your heart. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I noticed how the way they did that design and, and all those other scenes here and there which reacts to what was going on. So, yes, Janet was already, you know, becoming, getting into showbiz thanks to Farley, just trying to take it away from Brad. Her compliance is assured for the use of drugs by supplying to, by the McKinleys. Uh, Betty Hapshat, who's played by Ruby Rax, uh, joining in with Judge Oliver Wright, who's played by Charles Gray, yeah, the criminologist himself. Um, who investigate Farley and the other people involved in the DTV and eventually discovers that that both of them, yeah, spoiler alert again, that they're not really doctors at all. They're actually character actors portraying them. So, with the help of them, they decided to actually try to get Brad out of the cage as soon as possible and so they can escape and also try to get um, Janet out of, out of showbiz before he was ready to you know, become a couple with Farley, because even, you know, Janet discovered that Farley was sort of like Brad, in a way, and that's where they go for their escape, and they'll be able to stop Farley to go for his own game. You know, all the audiences and, and everyone around, the entire cast and crew had left as fast as they can, because the show was over, and, you know, they went out, and now, well, they're all alone, joining in with the other crew to drive around in this uh, beautiful convertible as they escape and while everyone else is just, you know, having a good time. <laughs> so that's basically what the story really is about. And I, I have to say, it wasn't that bad. I mean, it, it may not be as good as the Rocky Horror Picture Show, perhaps, in a way, but I still think it's just, it's as equal as it could be, as a sort of like a standalone uh, equal. Uh, the cast and the performances were all terrific, I'll give you that. Though, I mean, Cliff DeYoung did the best he could to portray both Brad and uh, Farley, and, well, of course, I would have imagined Tim Curry playing the role of Farley Flavors. That would have been interesting, too. It would have been sort of a nod to, you know, Dr. Frankenfurter. So, I know. So, maybe it may not be as as quite as clever as they could be, but they did what they could. Uh, therefore, I thought both Clifton Young and Jessica Harper did an, a great job uh, portraying the parts of Brad and, and Janet. And and I, I love all the songs and dance numbers that they put in, too. In fact, it's also interesting to see Jessica Harper singing as as uh, sultry and, and beautiful as it could be. I mean... After all, this is the same actress who also sang for the movie Phantom of the Paradise. And 
and it just proves that she, you know she's just as beautiful as she could be. Um, but Cliff the Young, of course, is just terrific to play a, diff, a dual role, and I, I could definitely see that. I mean, Farley Flavors is sort of modeled after, <laughs> I guess, Jack Nicholson in a way, <laughs> or or any other um, TV executive here or there. <laughs> Uh, and also, uh, you got to get credit to both Richard O'Brien and Patricia Quinn portraying the siblings of, of Dr. Cosmo and, and Dr. Nation. I thought they really nailed it, too. They almost look exactly like all these uh, mental hospital um, doctors that you often see, and especially if you watch them in, in other shows and movies, I mean, they, or even in real life, too. I mean, you do see these kind of people. And of course, little Nell as a nurse Adelon. I mean, she's incredibly sexy. Um, yeah, especially when she's just wearing those short skirts, and you can actually see <laughs> her black panties, you know, upskirt there. And then, while the rest of the other casts uh, were great, I mean, you actually got like a bunch of kids, you know, forming a band, hoping they'll join in with uh, with Janet. I mean, after she was becoming, getting into show business and try to be as famous as she can, even though she was drunk and, and sedative, too. Um, also, I gotta give credit to uh, Barry Humphreys, too, as uh, playing Birch Nick. I mean, he's he's as kooky as he can be, even though he's blind, but apparently he's actually very smart, and, like, at times, you know, he goes around, there's a scene where, he, where they're just having a conversation to, uh, with Cosmo and Nation, and you know he was already <laughs> taking a bite of an apple that he didn't realize, and and then we begin to find out that yeah he's he was going to be blind, but then when he takes off his glasses, he's not exactly as blind as, as he was anymore. But but he's also uh, very uh, <laughs> very uh, insanely crazy here <laughs> in a way, but. I guess you could probably say, you know, wrestling could be as the same as it could be. Um, as for the soundtrack, I mean, there are some memorable songs, some of which may not be, but then other songs, I think they were just as terrific as they could be. I mean, they're not exactly in the sense of uh, the soundtrack for the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but of course, you know, like Time Warp and as well as um, Damn It, Janet, and all, or to the entrance of Dr. Frankenfurter, but, but I thought Bitchy in the Kitchen was pretty memorable, as well as uh, Little Brack Dress and Me of Me, Shock Treatment. Look what they did to my uh, eye, and, and or even Thank God I'm a Man, so I thought they really uh, did what they could. And I, I love the costumes and set designs and everything they put into it. Um, it, it definitely try to go for this 50s style, happy, uh, home style type of feel to it. But then they blend in with all this uh, mental wards and the sanity and all that stuff. Now, yeah, the movie may have its flaws too, and, and it, it shows. I mean, maybe they could have explained in the background, even if it had to be an equal to, instead of being an actual sequel here, was that, was that's what it's supposed to be, um, was that they could have had explained about the background story about what happened to both Brad and Janet, you know, after they escaped from the castle that's been blasted off, and they could explain that in the movie, but it just seems like, you know, we learned that they're both married, but somehow things were not going quite as smooth as they were hoping they would be. For both of them like maybe they were explaining more about brad's problems and i don't know i mean i i could see why he was going through a lot of you know problems here and there as opposed to the janet you know maybe it had to do with their parents maybe it had to do with 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 their choices you know like maybe they're not connecting to each other or, or something i mean they could explain a little bit better too um that's my my particular theory here but hey Maybe that's exactly what they're trying to do. And there are some product placements here and there 
with all your familiar products, you know, like Kellogg's Corn Flakes, um, Excedrin, and uh, as well as like all these other uh, products that we're all familiar with. So they blend it into, I guess, the pay for royalties here. Um, but hey, I guess everything has to be as insanity as it could be. It's definitely worth watching, and it's not as bad as you think. And if you love Rocky Horror Picture Show, then I'm sure you can enjoy Shock Treatment. If not, then hey, what are the odds? I mean, I, I'd rather have or something good than nothing at all. But I, I'll say this, man. I think I would rather watch Shock Treatment over uh, the Rocky Horror Remake from 2016. I mean, for better or worse. And I really do hope it gets a Blu-ray release in North America. I mean, if it's either Arrow or perhaps uh, Shout Factory, maybe part of the Shout Select or perhaps Screen Factory, I think this would be perfect. Maybe they'll port all the features from them, and, and maybe they'll probably add some new features to join in, too. Like, I, I love to see some interviews with Cliff D. Young as well as Jessica Harper. And maybe Richard O'Brien and Patricia Quinn, too, if since they're still with us, and, and Little Nell would be nice. I'd like to see that. Anyway, that's Shock Treatment, and I give the film three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.